Just got so used to just riffing and doing quizzes with Josh. I just, how does one do this anymore? Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to build your rep folder of songs. But before I get into that, the show of the week this week is Merrily We Roll Along. It is a Sondheim musical about three friends in show business and how their lives and careers and friendship changes throughout time so I will link the cast recording to Merrily We Roll Along below if you'd like to check it out. As a musical theatre actor your rep folder is not only your main toolkit when it comes to auditioning and finding work but it's also very unique and personal to you. However building one can be very overwhelming. If you're coming from drama school you will have been given hundreds of songs from your singing teachers and rep coaches as well as been exposed to hundreds more in your other classes and if you didn't go to drama school and you're trying to build a rep folder you're faced with a musical theatre canon of thousands and thousands of songs and it can be impossible to know where on earth to start. So here are some things to consider if you're building your rep folder for the first time. The first thing to think about is what bases you want or need to cover in terms of categories. There are many different ways in which you can categorise your rep folder. You can do it by decade, so 1940s and before, 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s plus. You can do it by genre of musical or music, so contemporary musical theatre and the subgenres within that, legit musical theatre, pop, rock, jazz, freestyle rap, I don't know. You can do it by composer, so Sondheim, Rodgers and Hammerstein, Lerner and Lowe, Pasek and Paul, Jason Robert Brown, or you can do a combination of all of these different things. For me personally, I have three main categories in my rep folder, which are contemporary musical theatre, popular music, which is mostly pop and soul, gospel, R&B, but could also include rock, etc. as and when I need it, and legit musical theatre. So those are the three categories I choose, but whatever categories you choose will depend on you as a person, the kind of roles typically you feel you're most likely to be cast for, things like that. But even if you're not sure which categories would be best for you, I would suggest just choosing a category system just because it will help you really narrow down what boxes you need to tick in your rep folder, be able to look at all of the songs that you do know and think about which categories they may fall into which will help you feel less overwhelmed. It would be far easier to be like, okay, I know I want let's say a contemporary musical theatre category. So let's just look at my contemporary musical theatre songs first and get that section sorted and then I can move on to the next section rather than looking at everything and trying to narrow that down to 20 songs or so. The second thing to consider is your casting in its broadest sense. Now obviously casting is to some extent objective and there might be aspects of your casting that you won't really know where you land until you're out in the industry auditioning and you can see what kind of roles you get called in for and you can see a pattern there but there are some broad things that you can probably tell when a song is just not the right casting for you. For example age, it can be very easy for you to tell when a song or the role that the song is written for is much older or much younger than you. This is why Send In The Clowns is not in my rep folder. The character who sings that song is a much older lady, the song itself is very mature and my casting is very very young. If I were to take that into an audition there would be a disconnect with the panel and it would be, it would just be weird. Do you know what I mean? I just want to touch on something I've occasionally heard from others in the industry where people will say, oh I only have two songs that I take to every audition, like a fast one and a slow one, or I only have one song that I take to every audition. To be honest, that does sometimes tend to happen. I know in my rep folder there are songs that I've never sung at an audition because I've never been called in for anything where that song would suit or those songs would suit, and there is one song that leaps to mind that I pretty much do in every audition because of the kind of roles I tend to be called in for, it works. It's quite youthful and lively so it works for younger characters but it's not so young that I couldn't age up my performance if I needed to for a more adult character, adult as in age, not adult as in subject matter, but like a more mature character that 
just has that kind of youthful vivacity without actually being like 12 years old. However, I would never go in with that strategy. If it ends up happening by chance, then fine. But the reason you don't want to just be like, well, can't I just sing the song that I do really, really well in everything, is that firstly, when you're first going into the industry, you don't really know what your full casting is going to be. There are ways that you can try and get a good guess, you know, you can ask strangers or people that you don't know very well how old they think you are if they don't know your age, or what kind of jobs you look like you would probably do, what kind of personality you seem to give off, but that's not necessarily how the industry is going to see you. You know, casting directors might see something completely different, directors might see something completely different. The zeitgeist of how the industry is going at any given time changes people's perceptions of actors based on what they need. So when you're first starting out, you don't know what the best song is going to be for you because yes, you might knock a song out of the park, but if the entire industry is kind of seeing you as this other thing that this song doesn't showcase, that's not gonna work very well for you. And the second thing is, even once you get to a point where you know the kind of roles that you get seen for, you know your casting, you know that this song is probably gonna do for everything unless something really out of left field, pops up for you to audition for. A lot of the time, at least in my experience, you end up seeing the same kind of casting teams. And when you're getting seen by the same casting panels, by the same creative teams, you don't want to be taking the same song every time because it just makes you look like a one trick pony. And yes, that one song might still be right for the type of character because that's the kind of characters that you get seen for. But you want to at least be able to say, I've brought this song again because obviously it fits, but I also have this other song if you want to hear something else. Hiya, me from the editing room. Also, your casting changes as you get older, as you change your hair, or if you have a dramatic change in weight, that's going to affect your casting. And as your casting changes, it's going to be so much easier for you to navigate that shift if you have more songs to choose from in the first place. So as you notice that one song isn't working well for you, you can try switching it up. Whereas if you just have the one or two songs that you take to everything, you're going to have to find some completely new songs and prepare them from scratch. And that's just long. Don't want to make more work for yourself down the line. I just think it's good to have multiple options so that you can do more things and you can show another side to yourself or another side to the character if needs be. The third thing is to consider whether songs are very well known or very obscure. There are a lot of strong opinions about what songs you should never sing at auditions and what songs were perfect for auditions and they're usually involved around songs that are very well known, you could say famous, in musical theatre. I'm not here to tell you what songs you should never sing and what songs you should definitely sing. There are plenty of videos for you to find those lists and those compilations. But I'm going to tell you why many people would say that very, very well known songs or very, very obscure songs aren't the best for auditions, just so you understand the reasoning behind it rather than just telling you lots of songs that you just shouldn't sing or that you should sing. With very, very well-known songs, your performance is going to be compared to every other performance of that song. For example, if you go in saying, I'm gonna sing Defying Gravity from Wicked, that panel will have Adina Menzel, Rachel Tucker, Willemine Verkaik, Alice Fern, and all of the other alphabets, famous alphabets, in their head. So if your audition doesn't match up to the level of those iconic performances, it's going to make you look worse because that's what they're comparing you to. So the flip side would be, okay, I'll just do really, really obscure songs. The problem with that is A, the panel have nothing to compare your performance to because you know, if they don't know the song at all, they don't know how that song should be performed or what a good performance of that song would be, like a West End class version of that song would be. And secondly, and kind of more importantly, if it's very obscure, is that if the panel are hearing that song for the very, very first time, all of their concentration is not going to be on your performance and how you're telling that story. 
it's going to be on absorbing that song and absorbing the story because it's novel to them it's new to them they don't know the beats the high points and low points of that song to know how it should be performed they won't know if you acting on your face something that's different to the lyric is because you're a bad actor or because you're playing some kind of subtext that becomes clear later on in the song but because they don't know the song they don't know that do you see what i mean so ideally you want your rep folder to be made up of songs that are well known in the musical theater canon so someone who knows musical theater in general because they work in musical theater would most likely kind of know it and be familiar with it but not so famous that there are these very set iconic performances in people's minds when they think of that song now obviously if you can sing defying gravity to adina menzel's standards and you know that you can do that if you're sick if you're wrapped with nerves if the pianist just completely stops playing if the panel are just looking down at their phones and not looking at you any of the negative experiences that can happen in an audition setting then by all means put it in your rep if you want to and similarly for obscure musicals if you know that there is a song that no one knows because it's from your friend's fringe musical that hasn't been made public yet but you know that it sells you and your performance skills to a T, by all means put it in your rep folder. What I would say is if you're going to do that, A, if you're thinking about taking them to an actual audition, really, really think about it. And two, if you decide, yes, I'm gonna take it to an audition, make sure you have a second option so that when you go to the panel and they say, what have you got to sing? You can say, I've got Defying Gravity, but I also have this other song. Or I've got Name of Fringe musical song that my friend wrote, but I also have this other song. So that if the panel really doesn't want to hear Defying Gravity, they don't have to. Number four, think about your pianist. Now, there are some great audition accompanists out there. I've worked with some of them in auditions and outside in workshops and things. There are some fantastic pianists. A lot of them are musical directors in their own right, whether, you know, they're playing for their own auditions or they just do it as extra work. And even those who aren't musical directors, there are plenty out there who know their musical theatre canon. Not even exaggerating, I know some audition pianists who literally, you, they wouldn't be sight reading if you put stuff in front of them. You could take almost anything to an audition and they would not be sight reading. <laughs> You know, that's how well they know their musical theatre canon. However, not every audition pianist is as good as that. Some pianists don't know their musical theatre canon that well. Some pianists aren't very good sight readers. And when I say not very good sight readers, I don't mean that they can't sight read, but there's a limit to their abilities in terms of being able to sight read. And that's something you really need to take into consideration in terms of the songs you choose looking at the piano music, the piano accompaniment, and seeing how difficult it is. Now you might not know what piano music is more difficult than other piano music if you can't read music for example. I'm gonna say two composers that definitely fall into this category to help you guys out, but when in doubt, if you look at the piano part in a piano vocal score and you see more black ink than white paper, the harder the piano music is. Is going to be. In terms of composers, the biggest one to look out for in this regard is Sondheim. Sondheim is very difficult to play. It's also very difficult to sing, but it's very difficult to play because not only are there a lot of what we'd call accidentals, which are notes that don't fit into the key signature, which makes it harder to sight read, not only are there difficult rhythms and things like that, he also doesn't write chord diagrams on his music which is when above the stave if you've seen sheet music and it will have like a c minor b those are not in the right key but it's fine when you see letters above the stave they're basically to tell you what chord is being played under the melody so if you as a pianist get a piece of sheet music and the dots the actual music is too complicated for you to sight read you can what we call busk the chords 
so that you as the singer have something to sing against in terms of accompaniment without them having to play exactly what's written. Sondheim doesn't give you that, so if you're looking at the sheet music as a pianist and you can't read the dots, you have nothing to help you. The other composer to be wary of is Jason Robert Brown. His music does tend to have chord symbols written at the top of the stave, but his music is very rhythmic and it's got a lot of groove. It's very contemporary musical theatre which goes into a more poppy place, so a lot of his music has a groove. So if you don't know his music or you don't know the songs, just busking the chords might not give you the right feel as a singer in terms of in your audition being able to sing with it, it might put you off because what you're hearing won't be quite right. If you have your heart set on having a song by Sondheim, JRB or another difficult composer in your rep, then I would strongly recommend going to an arranger or a pianist that does arrangements or an MD and asking them to arrange a simplified piano version for you to take to auditions so that if you're going to an audition for something you don't have to worry about will the pianist be able to play any of it. An arranger can arrange the actual notes so that a pianist with kind of normal level <laughs> sight reading skills would be able to sight read it. They can add chord symbols above the stave so that if needs be a pianist could bust the chords without having to look at the dots and try and figure out what the chords are, they'll be written for them, things like that. The fifth thing to consider, which is kind of an obvious one, is to find songs that you can sing well, ideally almost effortlessly. Your main rep folder that you take to auditions should be songs that you can sing at the drop of a hat. That's what you're looking for, that's the sweet spot. So ideally it should be made up of songs that you've either done in an audition setting before, that's like the best case scenario, so you know that you can do them even when you have audition nerves coursing through your veins, or at the very least they should be songs that you have thoroughly prepared, as in you've had at least one singing lesson on them, not just something that you've printed off of music notes and just been like, it'll be fine let's just go to the audition tomorrow with it. No, you want to have had a session with a teacher or a rep coach on it to talk through not only technically how to sing it the best that you can, but also to go through the emotional journey and the story of the song. And the reason is your rep folder is also for those auditions where you are not given enough prep time. Like I said in my video about getting started as an actor, I've had auditions where I've had less than 24 hours notice that happens. Your rep folder is where you go to in those times where you're like, I don't have time to learn the perfect song for this audition and have a lesson on it to make sure that I can do it well, I'm just gonna have to go with something that's in here. That's what your rep folder is for. And that is also why you need your rep folder to have as broad a scope as possible in a way that's useful for you as a performer. You don't want to be in the position where they've said they want a specific genre or style of music and you have nothing in your folder that even remotely reflects that. And finally, number six, which to me is the most important thing, is to find songs that you love to sing. Of course, everything else I've already mentioned is very important, but if you go into an audition with a song that you love and you really enjoy telling that story, firstly, you're more likely to enjoy your audition, which anything that helps us enjoy auditions is always a good thing, but also the panel are more likely to enjoy it as well. And, you know, maybe the audition will go your way, maybe it won't, but at least they will have enjoyed seeing you perform because your joy and your energy will be reflected back at them. So yeah, always, always strive to have a rep folder full of songs that you just love singing. So those are my tips on how to build your rep folder. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Would love to have you on the channel. Stay tuned for more theatre content from a UK perspective and I will see you all in my next video. Bye friends!